In this video, we'll learn about conditional probability and the theorems and rules that allow us to compute them, like Bayes' theorem and the law of total probability. So what is conditional probability? So we can ask questions like, what's the probability that someone likes ice cream given that they like donuts? So we're just basically asking for a probability, but now given that we know more information. So this is written the probability of A given B. It's uh, the probability that A happens given that you knew B definitely happened already. And um, so let's compute this. So we'll, what we'll do is say, how many people actually like donuts? That's 20. And out of those 20 people, how many people also like ice cream? And so that's 7 over 20, right? And actually what we just did is we uh, looked at the size of the intersection, the people who like both ice cream and donuts, uh, and divided by the size of the people who like donuts. And if we divide both top and bottom by the size of the sample space, we can actually write this as the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B in the case of equally likely outcomes. So this will be our definition of conditional probability, which we got from intuition. Um, another, an equivalent formula that we'll use often is one where we move um, probability B to the other side. So we have probability of A and B to be A given B times probability of B. So a quick question. Does probability of A given B equal the probability of B given A? That's a common misconception, but no. Um, so for example, let A be the event you're wet and B be the event you're swimming. Then the probability of A given B is 1 because if you're swimming, then you're definitely wet. But the probability of B given A is not 1 because if you're wet, it doesn't mean you're swimming. You could be showering or something. So Bayes' theorem is this uh, new tool that we have, actually, that allows us to compute the probability of A given B uh, in terms of probability of B given A. It allows us to reverse the conditioning. And usually, one of these two numbers is much easier to compute than the other, like the previous one. So let's prove it. So by definition of conditional probability, remember we multiply both sides by probability of B to get the probability of A and B. But we can also swip, switch the roles of B and A, and we get this formula. And finally, we realize that these two are the same, because A intersect B and B intersect A is the same set. So we set the right-hand sides equal together, and then we divide both sides by probability of B, and now we have probability of A given B in terms of B given A. So that was based there. So now we'll talk about cutting up a sample space. So um, here are four events. What single English word would you use to describe what the following events do to the sample space? Well, I would choose the word partition. Um, and what are the two properties of this partition? Well, one is that they cover the entire space, and the second is that they don't overlap at all. And so this is our definition of a partition. So we'll say non-empty events E1 through EN partition the sample space if they're exhaustive, meaning that E1 union E2 all the way to EN, uh, written like this for shorthand, is omega. So they cover everything. And pairwise mutually exclusive, meaning for any I not equal to J, so any two different sets, uh, the EI intersect EJ is actually the empty set. And notice for any event E, E and E complement always partition the sample space. Here's EE, here's E complement. They don't overlap, and they cover everything. So now we'll talk about the law of total probability. Um, here's an event f. How can we write probability of f into smaller chunks? Well, actually, probability of f is um, composed of three parts. This green part, this pink part, and this yellow part. And what we can do is write this as the probability of f intersect e1, which is the green part, plus f intersect e2, plus f intersect e3. And let's throw in f intersect e4 for completion, uh, because it's actually 0, because there's no overlap. So the law of total probability says if you have a partition e1 through en, then to compute the probability of an event f, you can actually just calculate the sum of the probability of f intersected with each of the EIs. And using the definition of conditional probability that we had earlier, we can actually write it like this. So what does this formula even mean? Um, let's say you're in a chemistry class, and you want to know the probability fail. But you don't get to choose your teacher, so you're randomly assigned one. And what do you do? So you'll compute the probability of failing in each of the three classes, and weight those by the probability of actually getting that teacher. So Let's look at it. So the prob let's say the probability of having Mrs. Mean is 6 8, Mr. Nice is 1 8, and Miss I don't care is 1 8. And the probability they fail you is as follows. Then I think I would be pretty unhappy, right? Um, because I have Mrs. Mean with high probability, and she will definitely fail me. So that's not good. So let's use the de uh, definition. So the probability fail is the probability fail given that you had Mrs. Mean, which is 1, times the probability you had Mrs. Mean, which is 6 8, and so on. Uh, 0 times 1 8 plus 1 half times 1 eighth. So it actually takes a weighted average, the probability fail in each of the cases, times the probability actually end up in that case. And that gives you a high probability of failing, which, is, uh, which we expected, which is bad. And now we can ask a question uh, reversed. So we can say, what's the probability that we had missed I don't care, given that you failed? Is it high or low? And it turns out that's probably low, right? Because if you failed, it was due to Mrs. Mean, most likely, not Miss I don't care. So we'll use Bayes' theorem so we, uh, to calculate, and this is the formula. And we can just plug in the numbers. And this is the probability of failure that we calculated earlier, which is this complicated expression. And we get 1 13th, which is, lines up with what we said, because we would probably not have her with high probability. We would have Mrs. Mean with high probability if we failed. So um, we basically have this uh, superpower formula, which says, what's the um, probability of E1 given F? Uh, well, we use Bayes' theorem, and then actually the denominator, oftentimes we'll need to use the law of total probability, because there's many cases. Thanks.